Good afternoon. Here we are and another week. It is oh, about four minutes to four. Um, I hope that you have all had a nice weekend and some of you again might be out there enjoying the sunshine. Um, hopefully you've managed to come back in after your nice long walk and now ready for some yoga. So get yourselves um, ready. You don't actually need any equipment. Um, I will maybe do um, bird pose, put the bird in the path pose again. We'll see how um, the practice evolves. Um, more importantly, as you're just coming in, finding your space, just lie down. You can be in your Shavasana corpse pose being starfish or we can even go into child pose um because when we begin i'm just going to just read you just a little um piece from uh louise hay um as some of your words are really really inspiring and where we are right now um anzac weekend um lockdown moving into um level three on tuesday there's so much happening so um i'm hoping that you are all um well um in your bubbles so hi guys russia and brandon um nice to see you guys um in your bubble i wish i could see you um i've been zooming my clients and um I'm like big brother in their house. So um, you guys are watching me in the studio. So so welcome in. So I'll find my way back onto my mat. I'm going to take my glasses off. I've got my dog sitting over there in the corner just bathing in the beautiful sunshine. So I, I've got a bolster here um, and you can make your bolster up with just rolling up blankets rolling up towels it won't be as solid as this but at least give you a little bit of comfort so here's a really nice way just to go into child pose um, and i would be using this now just to say release my shoulders and across my back and then particularly my neck as then i can take my head also from side to side so if you haven't got any equipment, just allow yourselves again. Use the towel for your forehead, use your elbows, couple of fists, hips open or closed, or you're on your back into your um, corpse pose. So grabbing my glasses, I'll just sit here. You guys hopefully just relaxing. When I gong my um, crystal bowl, um, then you'll know that we have started our practice. So in the meantime, just close your eyes and allow yourselves to just think of where you are right now, how you feel right now. So all of your distractions, if you're in your bedroom, your lounge or any part of your house, you have to actually allow yourself to also let that go. So your space becomes your mat. And then as you start to come into your body, then as you clear all of those thoughts from your mind, you sit in the space in your body. So everything is around you, but you're not distracted by it. So just making sure that if you have other family members about, that they know that you're in your practice and hopefully they will just be sitting quietly next door or whatever activities they are doing. So making sure that you are comfortable. And these beautiful words from Louise Hay. In the infinity of life, where I am, all is perfect whole and complete. I believe in a power far greater than I am that flows through me every moment of every day. I open myself to the wisdom within, knowing that there is only one intelligence in this universe. And out of this one intelligence comes all the answers, all the solutions, 
all the healings, all the new creations. I trust this power and intelligence, knowing that whatever I need to know is revealed to me, and that whatever I need comes to me in the right time, space, and sequence, all is well in my world. Now just sit with that, resonate with some of the words, and then take the time to just allow your body to be quiet in that space so that you can now consciously breathe, feel the flow of energy, of life. Enjoy the process of preparing your body for the movement part of your practice. And then more importantly, when we come to the other part of our practice, where our bodies are now more connected, both through the physical form, but the mind now with the body. So use your breath. It is now your pathway. Breathing all the way from the top of your nose, all the way to your toes. As you find your way from the outside to the inside, and often we as Western birds have to do, because this is fine, we know this body on the outside, but we have to explore a little deeper on the inside to get to allow ourselves to get to know ourselves better. So continue with the breath, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Feel its movement, its flow, and more importantly, this rhythm of energy and life. Feel the quietness, the stillness within. Hopefully your outer surroundings are also allowing you to experience this. But knowing that our practice is also being aware of the distractions on the outside, but then not interfering with our work right now. All right, so in whatever position that you are, give yourself this time now to just quietly draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a well-deserved hug. And then allow yourself time to roll over onto all fours or onto your hands and your knees. And if you were in child pose before, just maybe change it. So you might have been in open hip extended arms. You might like to come into your more traditional pose. So if you're on your back, this is now quite appropriate to change places. If, however, you were here and you feel that you would like to go over onto your back, feel free to do that and bring those knees into your chest. On your next exhale, and start to just allow yourselves to move back into your tabletop. And tucking your toes under, we'll take the hips back to the heels so we can stretch into the toes and into the feet. Hands not too far forward, just enough so you can push those hands down into the ground. Feel the energy coming up through your arms. And the same with your toes as you're stretching out those feet. And then as you push to lift those knees up off the ground, so making sure you push those hands down really strong. Just allowing yourselves to find crouching dog pose. And then to release back down onto the knees and also now to release your toes. And then take your extended child pose. So hips open or closed, just allowing yourselves time to just lengthen through the spine. And if you've been busy walking, running, walking dogs, 
all of this movement now to release you through the back and the hips. And then we'll make our way back into tabletop. And take your time as we come into cat pose. So you chin to your chest, navel to spine. Release into the cow like pose. And here, tuck your toes under. So from here, as we go into downward facing dog, start to feel the lifting of the hips and the lengthening of the body as you drive those hips back and you find that nice long extension of your downward facing dog. We're gonna walk our hands to our feet to fall forward. We're gonna come up the shin to about a third, just to look out and explore, not too far ahead. Just maybe just follow your nose and smell with your nose. Allow all of your senses to come in to assist you on this journey this afternoon. So a big exhale to bring you all back down, folding forward. So remember, hands can be anywhere, okay? Because I'm short, it's actually quite nice to just sit them on my feet, so I'm actually connected here. Some like to have hands to elbows, but wherever you can totally release head, shoulders, necks, and the body is completely stable here, coming up through your feet and your legs. So let's come up a smidgen higher, just enough to bring out the chest and then take the arms behind your back. Just try and lean out the chest. And then on that next breath, doesn't matter if it's in or out, just finding your way with your body and your breathing. Try to keep the shoulder blades together, let the hands go. Good. And try and keep the shoulder blades together and let those little rawboard muscles keep working. And then when you read that, hands will come back down to the outside of your feet. The heaviness of your arms now release. The heaviness of your heads and your necks now gone. So big inhale, look out the end of the top of your mat. And walk forward into downward facing dog. Now, not too far away, I want you to have your heels off the ground. Good. Lifting those knees up into your thighs. Feel really strong here with that connection through from your hands and up through your arms. To lead your right knee in the air, three-legged dog. To drop your left heel to the floor and feel that nice stretch through the calves. To lift the heel back up and then to release that right foot to the floor. Look out the air to the top of your mat and then drive hips back and hopefully both heels getting a little closer to the floor, but feel the difference through the legs. Come back up off your heels, heads in between your shoulders. Lifting up your left leg to extend that leg three-legged dog and dropping the right heel down to the ground. Lifting that right heel back up and bringing that left foot back to the ground. Looking out to the hands and driving those hips back. So lifting up off the heels, but this time as you look to the back of your hands, walk as far and as close to the back of your hands as you can. And once you're there, pause and fold forward. We're going to find our way into mountain. So nice and slowly, come up through the body, extend the arms above the head. And with the palms of your hands together and the heads in between your shoulders, take a nice lateral movement off to your left. Pushing your right hip out a little bit to the side to get a deeper movement. But keep the legs really active from the floor to your feet. And then come back to the centre. Off we go over to the other side. And then move those hips a little bit further out to the left. Get that deeper movement all the way through the back. Opening in, creating space for your lungs. Coming back to the centre and take your time, swan dive. Come all the way back down. It's stepping back, left and right to downward facing dog. 
take plenty of time here, heels back up off the floor, and then the left leg goes in the air, three-legged dog. That knee bends for the knee to come ear to your chest, knee to nose, nose to knee. We come forward, just bring the shoulders over your hands, so kind of like a half of a plank, and then go back into three-legged dog. Take plenty of time as we bring that left foot through to the inside of your hands. Drop your right knee and release the foot. Open into crescent moon. Move the chest forward. Soften your eye gaze. Look down towards the tip of your nose. Now arms going out to the side, back to the floor. Tuck your toes under and release the right knee. Let's get that left leg back out the back into downward facing dog. So up comes the right leg, in comes that right knee. Come forward, but keep quite high here so that the knee stays tucked right in and up towards the chest. Go back into three-legged dog, and then bring that right foot through to the inside of your hands. Left knee drops, release the foot, and crescent moon. Arms going out to the side, back to the floor, release that knee, and then stepping right back into downward facing dog. Walking hands back to feet, pause here. So rather than taking you to the floor just a little too soon, just pause here, breathe in your forward fold. So you're just doing a chicken now. You're asking your body with that little bit of movement, how did it respond? Did you find the tight areas? So think through the musculoskeletal area of the body right now, but also noticing the breathing change as soon as we start to move into our lunging positions. So we look out, take a moment as we look back out there to the top of the mat. So when you walk forward, back into downward facing dog, take a little bit of time, not too far, but make sure you can drive your hips back. So you've got a nice strong grip here. So up comes the right leg again, three-legged dog, but this time to bend that leg, heel to hip. Good. When we come forward this time, the knee comes to the outside of your right arm, above the elbow if you can. We take it back into three-legged dog. And this time the foot comes to the outside of your right hand. Now take a little bit of time here. You're going to drop your left knee, release your foot. We've got an open hip here. So you take your time as we open that body and extend the arm. Now because you've got a bit more space here also from the hips, when you turn just allow yourself to fly. Just imagine that your wings are now just allowing you to just fly off that balcony really strong and safe. And then bring the arm back to the floor and tuck your toes under, release, and then stepping back into downward facing dog. Great work, guys. Taking plenty of time, lifting up the left foot. Bending the knee, heel to hip this time. When you come forward, the knee comes to the outside of the arm above the knee. You go back into three-legged dock. And the hand, the foot comes to the outside of your left hand. So dropping the right knee and the foot. So try and come as deep as you can here. The right hand stays on the floor. And then we open the torso to twist and extend the arm. The whole body comes with the arm, the toes tuck under, we release that knee, and we step back into downward facing dog. So now looking out to the top of your mat, come forward to plank, to the knees first, release your feet. Come through baby cobra, sneak forward, Lifting out. And then just lifting up the hips 
and going back into child pose now. So take your time, options now, again, hands, fists, wherever you are the most comfortable now just to release. Good. So come back to the breath. Notice the movement, the heart rate. Notice your breathing rhythm change. But know that when we are working our bodies like we do in our yoga, we're working through all of those systems. So an appreciation of your body and what's happening right now. As you come into your child pose with your eyes closed, allow your senses to come in to give you all of that information. Good. Now, I want you just to take a little bit of time just to release your wrist. So I'll turn around this way. Good. So if you come back to, to tabletop, okay, we're going to turn the hands upside down. So bring them close to your knees, but don't collapse. So this is still like tabletop. So you secure the feet at the back, make sure your core muscles are still switched on. And then just allowing yourself to, you're just turning the hands upside down. So you're not falling down into those shoulders. And then turn the hands back around. Good, and then take them for a walk off to the side, and then all the way around, and bending at those elbows, and just go back a little bit towards your heels. Good, and you feel that nice stretch coming up through the forearms. Also, if you, and when we turn those hands upside down, these are wonderful hand, wrist, forearm releases, especially for most of us that are spending a little bit more time on those computers and with our eyes on those screens. So again, as often as you can close your eyes, cool, and sense, then you're resting those muscles. So turning those hands back over, good. And let's take our time to find camel. So we're gonna sit first just on our heels. So remember, if you want something underneath your feet, if you're tight coming through calves, you're gonna be tight on the shins, be tight in the ankles so if you need that towel just in between your hamstrings and your calves then that's fine so this camel we all come hands to the back a little bit wider than your hips and then we'll lift the hips away from the heels so using the feet and then when you found your place you feel those thighs lifting up the chin but not throwing your head out the back door And then the head comes back, and then we come back to the heels. Now, you can stay there, or option now is we take one elbow to the floor at a time. This is Thunderbolt pose. It just gives your thighs a little bit more stretching here. You can stay here just with your elbows, hands to your feet, and you can look straight down through your body, or you can lift up your chin, and you can take your head down to the floor. Now, in theory, okay, your head can support you here because your legs are supporting you, your torso is supporting you, so there's hardly any weight into my head whatsoever. As long as you keep working, pushing those thighs forward towards your knees and pushing down into your feet. So when we come up, I've got my elbows back here, I'll bring my head back up, I'll bring my elbows back a little bit further, then I'll push down and then I'll return. Now, whichever camel you've done or you went and you were able to go into Thunderbolt, make sure you reverse that now just by coming into child pose and take a couple of moments. That's strong back bends, so just take your time. Keep paying attention to the breath. 
and always asking your body, how's it feeling? Is it responding? So we'll roll it up out of here, nice and slowly. All right, so as you come to kneel, tuck your toes under now. So we'll take this in to a twist, okay? And so my being on the side to you guys, you'll be able to get the idea. So the arms are out to the side. We turn the torso to look to the right. Right hand, right heel. Good. Left arm over the ear. And we're looking down to the floor. Now, same as camel, you move the hips forward. And let your spine just be really, I guess it's a, a kind of like, how do you feel when you've taken this twist? Intercostal muscles, back and shoulders. So therefore be really careful about your head and your neck. And then we come back to the center. Just pause, just re-wriggle the toes. Now, if the toes aren't comfortable being tucked under, okay, let's release them. However, notice when they're tucked under how high we are. When they're released, we're a little bit further down towards the ground. If it's doable, rotation, here's the heel, there's the arm, and looking down to the hand or to the floor. Moving the hips forward. And then make sure you're pushing the feet down, utilizing the whole body and you come back to the seater. Bringing your hands to the floor, and this time to release, tuck your toes under and crouch the dog. So let's bend the legs, chest, belly and thighs. And then let's lift up the hips and drive them back and just feel that beautiful extension and now the breath flowing through the body. And stepping your right foot to the outside of your right hand, followed by your left. Good. Just maneuver your feet just enough so you can just sit down and pause. Now, this is always quite a challenge to sit here, okay? So it's quite nice if you maybe had and rolled up the edge of your mat, okay? So your heels are up a little higher. So if you, especially if you can't get the heels to the floor. If you are up here and your heels are off the floor and you can't come down any deeper, support your hands with and with on the floor. So you can come here, open the hips, bring your hands together into prayer. And then all of that will assist us as we come into Trikonasana or Triangle Pose. So wherever you are in your sitting position, cool. Take the hands to the floor, lift up those hips, take a forward fold. And we'll come up into mountain so we can come into your triangle pose from standing. So let's roll it up nice and slowly when you're ready. And the arms above the head. Turn the hands to prayer and to the heart centre we go. All right, so welcome in. Wide angle on your mat. So let's turn out right. So we started in the, in the wide angle. So right leg out to the front, left leg out to the back. With that little bit of angling of your foot if you need. So taking your arms then out to the side. Move from the back to the front. So you shift that left hip out and then we come forward. We're just gonna slide your right hand just to the inside of your right leg, the calf. And then play with your left arm. Good. Make sure you're really anchored here because now we're going to extend the arm. So if we can look out to the side, we can look down to the foot. Just make sure you're not pushing the foot forward. You're nice and strong with your 
feeling of feet to the ground. Good. Now we're going to bend this front leg and we get a little bit deeper with the arm on the thigh and the hand to the belly. So now we're in extension of warrior two. Now we'll take our right hand to the outside of our right foot and we need to adjust a little bit to get a little bit deeper. We'll turn our body around, lots of adjusting with the feet. I want you to anchor your heel down to the floor and create a scissor by coming back to extend that right leg. But now look where our hips are, straight ahead. So fold forward now. Breathe. Breathe up towards the navel, into the solar plexus. Release out of the shoulders. And the emptiness of the head will allow you to tuck your heads in. Now notice how I've got my hands still here, just to the outside of my body. And that's fine. We're not going to take them anywhere. We're going to start to come forward and bend into the front knee. Those little adjustments with that back foot. And then rise up into warrior one. Crescent moon in the chest. So you think about the work that you did in camel. So move the hips forward, but don't sit into your lower back. So all of this needs to be long and extended. And I'm just looking, just following my nose. Now we can come back to the center, bring the hands down through the center, and just lose the arms. And then find your way back into a wide angle. So you'll need to just wriggle around a little bit. Good. And then turn your feet parallel to pop your hands on your hips. And just come to tabletop. Coming back up. Pushing down, feeling all the energy coming back through the body. Let's change sides. Now, plenty of time to set up, okay? I tend to lose the arms a little bit until I'm happy with my feet, my hips, okay? So once you're ready, so now the left leg is extended, right leg out the back, and then the arms ready when you're ready. So moving from the back to the front, here's the left hand to the inside of the cuff. And there's that right arm now up to the ceiling. So again, you can look up if you want to. I very seldom do, okay? I'd rather kind of like be focusing on what's happening through my neck to my shoulders, my back to my neck to my shoulders, into my head. Good. And then when we bring that arm over the ear, that beautiful lateral movement. So solid from the feet through the legs, Good, to the core, and then when we bend that front leg, we're in that extension of warrior two. Just move your toes around. Good, so left hand now to the outside of your left foot. Good, we swivel it around and we find our way into lunge. Lots of adjusting again on each side. So dropping your right heel. Lengthening out your left leg, so you're on a scissor, and then arms out to the side, and take that forward release. Big breath here. So you're almost here gathering back up all of your energy. Because as we start to come forward and you're sitting up for warrior one, make sure your leg at the back is your anchor and up we come. So front leg bent, then again creating the crescent moon. Maybe just following your nose, depending on where the head has gone with the shoulders. And then coming back to the center. All right, so from here, just allow ourselves to come forward. Good, to bring the hands to the floor, swivel through the ball of your foot, and then let that left leg go back out behind. 
So nice, strong, downward facing dog. And then when you're ready, come back to child pose. Nice work. Awesome. So again, close the eyes, come back into your body. Follow the breath. Breathing in. Breathing out, just feeling the energy. So this was where we're learning when we're moving through our varying poses, postures, what's happening to our bodies. Because one day when we come through a variation of our warriors, we're fine, we're feeling really strong, really powerful. And then another day we come through and we're just not feeling that same amount of energy. So you kind of like have to do some reflection. I mean, we're all having to do reflection, it doesn't matter what it's about. But allow yourself to learn from what's actually happening through our yoga practice whether it's your breathing, whether it's when we're in relaxation or meditation, but often the postures tell us so much about what's happening to the physical because of what's happening to the systems or what's happening through the metaphysical place as well. So just be okay that you might not feel as strong today as you felt yesterday. And on that note, we're going to play, okay? We'll just play a little bit. So this is fun, but you don't have to do it. So if you feel that it's just not for you, then remember, you can go into relaxation, okay? Child pose or bridge. Bridge is the most awesome posture, pose, asana, to go in at any time that the other stuff isn't ready for you today. But if you're with me, okay, I'm going to tuck the toes under and we're just going to hop our feet out to the side. Now, this movement is like a bunny hop, okay, your hands go forward and remember, as the body moves, the heels come off the ground. So we hop, good, hands move and we hop. So it's no different hopping back, hopping back, it's like walking, heel toe, heel toe, Going backwards, toe heel, toe heel. All right? So when we set you up to come in to your bird. Now, on Friday, I brought in a couple of blocks, but you don't have to have a block, okay? But I'll demonstrate with one block first. Because when you've got a block and you're here, you can actually do that little hop. So we set the feet, heels are already off the floor. Good. We set the hands in a place that when we come forward, we can anchor the legs and the arms together. Then up go the hips, and the heels will come up a little higher to allow us to push the hands down and then pop the toes off. And then we can sit wide. Now, if you didn't have a block, you might sit here. The nice thing, if you have a block, or a book, a hard copy book, does the same thing. You move that block there, and we sit here. All right, so let's take away the block and we hop and we hop. Okay, going forward. Good. It's as light as a bunny rabbit. And we go back and we'll just wriggle around here. So now I'm going to set myself up in my bird from here and I'll take my feet out wide. So I like to pull my feet back in together. So position your hands and you have to play around with this because as soon as you come forward, you go, hmm, that's not gonna work for me today. Might need my hands back here, maybe. But you have to think about when you move your hips forward, pulling up the feet and pulling them back together. And then you can come back out wide and then just sit down. So it's quite energizing 
but it's quite taking a lot of energy. Hence why if you tried one to that it didn't work, you've gone back into bridge. And you kind of like just listening to the cues and going, I don't like bird anyway, Joan. And that's fine. Okay. So to put the bird in the bath, this is all about the hips. The hips and our backs, okay, getting your inner thighs to talk nicely to your core muscles. So that integration of all of our muscles, okay? So it's not about having strong arms. And often people say, oh, my arms aren't strong enough, or my wrists aren't strong enough. It's getting everything in the reasonably correct space, place, so that this is working, these are working, so that there is your correlation of connection of your body, and you have to remember to breathe. So to get the bird in the bath, we need to have the hips up, bring the arms in underneath, and when we sit the hands to the floor, they might not get to the floor here, but when we bring the hips down, then the hands should go to the floor, just underneath your shoulders. You can walk the feet out, and you can stay here. Good. It's the same as the bird before. You need to push the legs against the arms, vice versa. We come out, and we come out, and we sit down. Now, why like this one? It can then ultimately be your own creation of boat pose. Good. Okay. So let's do that one one more time. So we're here. We take a forward fold from the hips. We come in. Get the arms around the legs. Here come the hands. Sitting them down. And straight away, you'll go, I could take my hands back a little further. Yes, I could. And then you find the balance. Variation. Variation, 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 and I can sit down. Good. Bring the soles of your feet together. Find, you don't have to find the feet. Wrap the arms around your legs. And then when we come down, we'll come straight out. Shake out the legs. And we'll come forward. All right. So after all that, if you did all that with me, yes pat on the shoulder. So now you can go, Ooh, okay, let me rest now, June. Thank you very much, Lee. So make sure you are, whether you're on your back, you crawl off onto your belly, then that's fine. So remember, eyes closed and we come inside. Even in your own personal surroundings here, even though there's familiarity, it is really important to let go of the kitchen table, the coffee table, or the bed, um, so that that distraction isn't allowing your mind to go somewhere else, all right? So, and it's really, really easy. So that's why in most of our poses, we can, once we know them, okay, once we know our body is okay about going into that pose today, we can close our eyes and we come into the pose because we're now in our body. So just take a couple of moments and breathe in and out through your notes and say thank you to your bodies. Cool. So, wherever you are, come on over now on to your back and let's roll down onto our back. So, this would be really nice now to actually come to the floor and it's like, whoa, you can feel and pick up all that body's vibrations here. So, take your time now just drawing your right knee into your chest and give it a big hug. Returning the foot to the floor and coming through the other side. And then returning the foot to the floor. All right, so let's tuck our toes under. We're coming into bridge. 
and we should have enough time for me to move you in to plow or into shoulder stand. So I'm going to bend my arms, I'm going to use my elbows and at the same time I'm pushing my feet down, I'm pushing the elbows down and I'm going to lift up that body and maneuver it around. So up goes the chest and down go the shoulders. So that's where we want to try and be when we go into shoulder stand because all of the rest of our body is working here, okay. Here I can drop my heels, just adjust my feet a little bit. And I can feel my thighs stretching. I'm pushing down. Good. But I haven't lost this height here. So that whole thoracic area, that whole rib cage, where the lungs are, everything's off the floor. You're sitting right back into your shoulders. But what's working in the most, okay, are your thighs, okay, and your back thigh. So we'll come down slowly through the spine all the way down to the tailbone. So bring that right knee back into your chest, give it a hug and feel the stretch coming through the back and the hips and into the hamstring. Here comes the other leg. Now it would be nice if we all had equipment and sometimes just a rolled up mat or a rolled up blanket underneath your back rather than you rocking and throwing yourselves over into plow, is to have this really strong connection through your core. Good. Legs are active. Good. And you've just got enough space here to pop your hands underneath, using your elbows, and then rolling your body over. I know it sounds really easy, but it's not, okay? So just make sure you're not forcing your rolling over. I'm just getting my pants out of my face. And then work to get as far and as deep into your shoulders as you can. Bending the legs as much, opening them out wide here, exploring by octopus. Taking your feet out in different places. And I'm still supporting myself here, okay? And that's really important so that you're not letting your weight of your legs fall down into your head and to your shoulders. So then I'll pull everything in. I'll have the legs bent and I'll just pull the knees away from my chest. And then I'll start to extend the legs. So for most people, we'd be about here. So just being aware of how you're feeling your upper traps into your necks. And if the legs close in your candlestick aren't working, bend your legs. Butterfly your feet. Open out. Bring them back in. Now the only time, because I know I'm not that strong, okay, through my core, in my shoulder stand, I always support my body. But when I'm going back into plow, I've got a little bit more power here. My feet can grab the floor and then I can let the arms go. I'll bring them back in, supporting my body, and we'll roll it down to the ground. So once you've touched down, feet, shoulders, and head, I like to keep my head kind of like just moving with my spine as I come back down. Pop your hands on your belly. Close your eyes again. Breathe in and out through your notes. Legs can be bent. Legs can be extended. You can have one bent leg. You can have one open hip. Okay. Is what, is, just make sure that when you come down to the ground, you felt the work. Good. And then just come back into the body using your breath. So time always goes so fast in these sessions. So I'm hoping that who has joined me that you are now back on the floor in Shavasana Corpse Pose. Just going to finish with giving you another reading. Good. Doing lots of reading. But again, coming from Louise Hay. In the infinity of life where I am, all is perfect, whole, 
and complete. And yet life is ever changing. There is no beginning and no end, only a constant cycling and recycling of substance and experiences. Now we're all going to relate to this right now. Life is never stuck or static or stale, for each moment is ever new and fresh. I am one with very I am one with the very power that created me, and this power has given me the power to create my own circumstances. I rejoice in the knowledge that I have the power of my own mind to use in any way I choose. So even though where we each are right now, not being able to control something that has affected our lives, we can all choose how we think. Every moment of life is a new beginning, point as we move from the old. This moment is a new point of beginning for each of us right here and right now. All is well in our world. Now come out of your relaxation place, nice and slowly. Being really aware of that transition and change from when we began our practice this afternoon to where we are now. How we felt, how we feel, time has moved. So come to join me now with your hands to prayer and bring them to the heart chakra. To bow our heads and say thank you. To honour breath and life. And to have that awareness of every time we take a new and fresh breath. It is new. It's not the old one. It's another one. And it's a new and fresh breath of our life. And when you really quietly you open your eyes. Now, I want you each to have a wonderful, wonderful week. If you are working and as we move into level three next week, you are open to just creating something different um, for your week. But please, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, please stay safe. Namaste. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed your practice this afternoon. Wonderful.